Hey guys, what is up? Cody Carter coming at you once again. Uh, starting the survival series back up. I know it's been a couple weeks. Been a little busy. Um, <laughs> my original plan here for the uh, survival series has gotten erased. So I'm just going to go one by one, draw a new one every time. So the subject of this one is first aid, obviously. Um, truth of the matter is, is that if there's two avenues that my bug out bag and my home storage and, and everything else, two avenues that everything goes down, it'd be first aid um, and water. They're the two most important things that I have, the, the main focuses of my bag. I have three, three ways of purifying water, three ways of storage, water, uh, multiple first aid kits in my bug out bag, one in my home, one in my car, one in my toolbox. So those are my two main focuses. Now, I have this little thing. I got, you know, you can find this pretty much anywhere. Used to have a little carabiner on it. I was moving some carabiners around. That's why it's not on it right now. But this is a pretty cheap first aid kit. I think it was like, a, you know, 7 or $8. This thing, you can get pretty much anywhere. You know, there's gauze, big gauze pads, things like this. Nothing huge little roll of tape, you know, it, it, it's a nice little, they say it's waterproof, I haven't tested it, I don't really want to dunk it out of the water and get everything all wet, but these are nice because they're cheap, they're lightweight, you can stick them right on the outside, what I do is I keep the big first aid kit right here, actually in my bag, in it, in it, uh, this is on the outside for treatment of like cuts and scrapes and stuff like that. Now this is my big first aid kit. Now I'll have you know that I used to have this little pre-made one and this little pre-made one and I, I let it sit for a little while and I didn't like it. I didn't like, I wasn't comfortable not knowing exactly what everything was, exactly where everything was in the kits. So what I did was I took both kits that I had at the time, took these apart, completely separated everything and then divided it up. So this is exactly like this, only this is a little bit smaller. So in this one, I'll show you this one because this one I'm actually really happy about. Uh, as you can see, there's three little sections. This is a snake bite kit. Um, and I know, generally speaking, you're never gonna run, I mean, depending on where you live, I guess, but most of the time you're not gonna run into poisonous snake, but never say never, you know. Um, this thing is actually pretty nice. It was only a couple bucks. It's got a nice little suction cup. It's got a little iodine. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Nice little iodine couplet there. It's pretty nice. It's not a bad little product. It's only a couple dollars. Now in this, a couple pairs of rubber gloves. This is this little section right here is where I keep all my towelettes. And also... Boom. This is, let's see if you can see that, anti-diarrheal medicine, which goes in line with the illnesses up here, and I'll explain all that in a minute. There's uh, alcohol pads, antibacterial pads, sting relief pads. Let's see what else we got in here, because these, oh, dropping stuff. Yeah, sting relief pads. These are alcohol pads. Alcohol prep pads, we got a lot of those. All different types of pads. Let me see. This middle section is where I, oh, of course. I'm just gonna pick these up and set them down for a minute. This little middle section right here is where I keep all the pills I have. Uh, aside from the diarrhea medicine, there's uh, acetaminophen, aspirin, uh, ibuprofen, that's where I keep most of the bigger bandages because this one's folded in half. This one's if you got a big scrape or something like that. And that's where all the bigger gauze pads are, you know, the three inch and the four inch gauze pads. I don't know if you can see them all back there, but you know, I got a nice little handful of those. And then the tape to go along with the gauze pads. And then this final little section is for all the extra band-aids uh, I have. Nice little stack of them. My tweezers, my scissors, and that's about it. So like I said, it's it's not a surgical kit, you know, I'm not trying to 
perform surgery and emergency birth or anything like that. But it, all this stuff I found, just even throughout basic life, is good to have. Now the one in my everyday carry bag is actually a little different because I have, you know, a big bunch of Tylenol in it. I have um, things like, I have some allergy meds in there and I think I have some allergy stuff in here too. I might have stuck them in. Uh, yeah, here's the allergy. Allergy pills, anti-diarrheal pills, uh, and these have each, each, a packet of each. There's acetaminophen, ibuprofen, and aspirin, and things like that. And I just wanted to show you real quick the first aid kit I keep at home, which is this big green thing. i got to put that away. Now this thing, now let me tell you something. A lot of people in everyday life will scoff at things like the dollar store, dollar tree, and things like that. This whole thing was very, very cheap. I got it all at the dollar store. It's all pretty nice stuff. Hand sanitizer. I have one of these elastic bandages with little clips on them. You know what I'm talking about. I have gauze pads, band-aids, two rolls of tape, regular adhesive tape and waterproof tape. More gauze pads. I have two boxes of gauze pads three rolls of gauze. Now these aren't very big and I didn't really, wasn't a big huge fan of this, but it wasn't too bad. I have extra rolls of toothpaste only for a dollar. I have antibiotic ointment, hydrocortisone cream, and burn relief. I have two actually, two, two antibiotic cream. So, this is for the, the the real the reality of it is I was sitting at home and I was thinking about prepping as I usually do pretty much every day. Um, I can't get all this back in there, and I I realized that at home we didn't have anything. We didn't have any band aids. We didn't have any um, anything like that, and it just really distraught me. So I went and I put that thing together for. Maybe $20. That was pretty nice. Um, so I'm going to take a look at this. These are the five areas that I like to focus on. So illnesses. Um, I'm going to include things like diarrhea. And if you get really bad, you know, dysentery. You can have any kind of vomiting, things like that. In a survival situation, the biggest threat to your life is like dehydration. So if you have diarrhea, if you have excessive vomiting, things like that, and you're hot, if you have a huge fever and you're just sweating and sweating and sweating, you're gonna lose a lot of water and you're gonna die a lot quicker. Um, so it's very important to keep those things under control, hence the, um, oh, did I not show you this? It's like a the Pepto-Bismol pills, but, and then the, uh, the anti-diarrheal medicine. Those are both really important. If you ever get in a situation where you're low on water, and you have crippling diarrhea, you're going to be in a lot of trouble really quickly. Small wounds, things like finger cuts, scrapes, if you fall. <coughs> a lot of people like to not pay any attention to this stuff because uh, it's just it's just a little cut, you know. Move on with your life. Um, first off, when you when you put it in your mouth, you're introducing a whole slew of brand new germs into that wound. A lot of people don't take care of small wounds like they should. Uh, infection prevention, job number one, by the way. If you are, you, you get a small cut on your hand and you think everything's fine and two days later you are horribly sick with a massive infection and your finger starts turning black, you're really going to wish that you had taken care of it. Um, not to say that that's a common occurrence, but it could happen. You got to take care of yourself. Large wounds pose a whole different slew of problems. Um, large wounds, big cuts, if you accidentally hit yourself with the axe, you break a bone, uh, you gotta have ways to splint, you gotta have ways to cover those and disinfect those. Excuse me. Um, the reality of it is a large wound can be fatal really quickly in an emergency situation where you don't have access to things like healthcare. Um, you get a large wound, you need gauze, you need bandages, you need antibacterial you need alcohol I do have some alcohol in there I didn't I didn't bring it out but <laughs> you need 
you need a lot of things for large wounds. Not only that, but large wounds, when they're healing, they, they require a huge amount of energy to heal that bodily tissue, and they take a good long time. So if you're ever incapacitated by a large wound, you're going to have a huge problem on your hands unless you can manage that and still continue with your life. <clears throat> Dental care, huge, huge thing that a lot of people forget about. I have little kits made for myself in the in my little storage area. There's dental floss, um, those little fake toothbrushes, you know, the ones that are disposable. You just shove in your mouth and rub it around a little bit. Um, what else? So there's floss, there's... Then I have extra toothbrushes, four packs of toothbrushes. I have extra tubes of toothpaste, five or six, just just in the house that are separate from regular circulation. So dental care is very important. Your mouth is very dirty. And if you're in a situation where you're out in the wilderness, you may not, you're not going to get to brush your teeth every day unless you prepare for it. I have a tube of toothpaste and a toothbrush in my, in my, uh, in my glove box in my car, you know, so I have, I'm always within reach of a toothbrush and toothpaste. So I also have them at home and in my little kit. So Dental care is very important. Your mouth is very dirty. Trust me. Lastly, you have aches and pains. Let me tell you something. If you guys have ever been in a prolonged, even like a prolonged camping situation, not like camper and fifth wheel and all that fun stuff, but I mean like, <clears throat> when I went camping, I went to a rural area. There was no electricity. There was, I didn't bring any firewood. I didn't bring anything except for my bug out bag and that was it. So I gathered all the wood myself I uh, processed all the wood myself. I made my own fire and all that other stuff. So I didn't bring any lighter fluid. I didn't bring any um, anything like that. I just had to go and get it. And after a long day, four or five hours of collecting wood, you're going to be tired and you're going to be sore. And, and, and take it from me, multiple days of constant aches and pains, it wears on you. Your back's going to hurt. Your knees are going to hurt. Your arms are going to hurt. So that's why I have in my little kit, I have bottles of ibuprofen, bottles of Tylenol. I have some in the cupboard at home. I have some in my everyday carry bag. I have some in my uh, at work on the shelf. So I'm never, I'm never out of reach of it, really. Not that I take it that often, but if I'm ever in a situation where I, I need to focus on something, I don't want to... Be completely thrown off and be focusing on how much my back hurts or how much my legs hurt or how much my knees hurt and man I sure wish that I didn't have to do all this man I you know and then you're riddled with this pain and it affects your mental your mental status after a while so that's about it like I said first aid is pretty much the second biggest in my bag aside from water um, really really important and really really important to not only have it in your bag but in your home you know, kind of just take this video and go and look through your cupboards, find all the band-aids. And if you have any expired medications, if you have any expired tubes of whatever, throw it away. Go get some new ones. It's not hard. They're not that expensive. Um, as far as medications go, I can't really say. But, you know, go buy a bottle of ibuprofen. Go buy a bottle of acetaminophen at the dollar store and move on with your life. Don't cling to that stuff because it's going to do more harm than good. Um, and that's about it. That's all I want to share with you guys. Glad I could do this again. Um, I, like I said, I've been a little busy, so I've been just trying to throw this stuff back up again. <clears throat> and that is it. So I will be seeing you guys soon, shortly. Thanks for all the love on that Bug Out Bank video, by the way. You guys rock. I think it's up to like 1,700 views now, and I've gained quite a few subscribers from it, so I'm pretty happy about it. Um, thanks again, guys, and remember, it's your life. Live it.